In this section, we are going to understand about RNN and LSTM. This section will be divided into different subsection or a small videos in which we will understand why we require an RNN and LSTM. Just to start with, RNN stands for Recurrent Neural Network. LSTM stands for a long short term memory network. You can think it as a LSTM is an improvement over an RNN. We will see later on this course that what are the problems with a recurrent neural network and how LSTM solve it. So you can also think LSTM as a with some superpower over a RNN. Recurrent neural network. So let's start with a simple neural network that what we have studied in our section number one and section number two. So a simple neural network will have some kind of uh, inputs. Uh, there can be one input, two inputs, hundreds of inputs. You have a hidden layer. Hidden layer consists of the neurons. And then you have an output layers. Depend upon your model, you may have more than one hidden layers. One hidden layer may contain thousands of the neurons. You may have all the inputs connected to all the neurons or you may have inputs connected to some specific neurons. It totally depends upon the kind of a neural network you are developing. So during a regression in section 1 we saw that you have to connect in this particular fashion. In second section where we have understand the convolutional neural network that are the CNNs, we found that we extract some portion and then we do a desampling and some kind of stuff to get our output and you may have a more than one output. So in very general term, we can understand we have two inputs and this is our three neurons that consist of our hidden layer and this is an output layer. This is a hidden layer because it is not visible to the world. And in very first section, we try to understand how machine learning works. So you have an input, some weights are applied to form this and then neurons pass this as the output. Then using a gradient descent or scholastic gradient descent, you try to update your weights till you get an proper value. So you already have an input values, you have an output values, your network is trying to predict the values. So if your prediction is not exactly the value that you have expected, then you go on updating your weights such that this neurons try to give you a predicted value close to your expected value or a predefined value. So that's how the neural networks work. Now what happens if your output are dependent? Let's say you have a time series or you have a some kind of a series where second value is dependent on the first, third value is dependent on the second, fourth value is dependent on the third. So these are the normally a time series kind of an examples. So where you have a time factor and you, it is changed together. So think about the share prices. If you want to make a prediction model for a share prices, they are linked. So your output of the Opening of a second day is dependent on the first day. Third day opening is dependent on the second day. So the values are dependent. So you cannot have this kind of a prediction models where your inputs are somehow not linked for the outputs. So in that case, you require a different approach. So just to understand and to move ahead, what I want to do is to squeeze these layers in a some form. And why we want to squeeze because we want to understand RNN in a most of the theoretical way that all the books and websites explains. So let us say we have these two inputs. I combine them or show them as a one circle. I combine this whole hidden layer with a three neurons to represent as a single circle. And in our case, we have a one output. So it will look something like this. So you recall your first diagram that we studied. You have a two input one hidden layer with three neurons and one output. So we have represented in this format. And your hidden layer again forms a loop back to itself. So you get an input, you get a second input from your hidden layer itself. So when you try to unfold it, it will look something like this. And this can be think about the time. So this is at time t, this is t minus one and this will be t plus one. You can see that this hidden layer is forming a loop back. So now you can think it as a graph with a cycle. So this creates a cycle. This shows a cycle. So when you start initially, you don't have anything to be inputted into this layer. So what you do is you pass it with zeros or some kind of a default values to start with. 
then you pass your inputs remember we have two inputs one hidden layer with three neuron so that's what we are doing so at time t minus one you put your x inputs get your value of a hidden layer from previous layer if it's not there you have a default values or weights then the output of this hidden layer will also give you an output for this layer as well as it will become an input for a second step that is as a time step at t so at t the t minus one's output is considered and x values are considered to found the output and this will continue till depends upon the number of time steps you are performing so that's how the rnns are looks and you can see that your this prediction is dependent upon the, this prediction prediction of h or o t plus one is dependent upon this so this is what is missing in previous examples so simple neural networks don't have that kind of a connection try to understand that this represents a whole hidden layer you may have more than one hidden layers so output of a first hidden layer will also be treated as an input of a second hidden layer plus the input values that you are passing so i hope now it's clear why we required a recurrent neural network this is a very standard diagram that i have taken from a wikipedia and you can find this diagram in multiple texts in on web or on also in a libraries so what is recurrent neural neural network it is used for prediction where the prediction is dependent you don't have a independent predictions again time series is an example where you required share market prediction is also an example of an rnn and there are many other example we will see so it's a process where one element in the sequence at one time step after the computation the newly updated state is passed down to a next time step to facilitate the prediction of a next element so in this your layers are connected such that they also give input for your next layer so it creates a cycle that's what we saw in a network graph so the internal state can be maintained and used for a next element just to remember if you have an connection between an input where second value is dependent on first third is dependent on second some kind of that connection and you need to use a rnn that is a recurrent neural network now where it is used the widely used of an rnn is in a word prediction maybe it's on your mobile maybe on your computers where the words are predicted once you start typing that's what example of an rnns because your words are predicted on the basis of the first word you type just for example i am a good boy so when you type i the m will be predicted on the basis of an i good m when you write a good the boy or girl will be predicted dependent upon the good that kind of a relation where your second output is dependent on the first you use an rnn and the word prediction is an example he is a good boy so you know he and boy are connected so when you type he the suggestion will be boy in translations where you have a translation from one language to another language there is a kind of a mapping in that case also rnn is used where there is a dependency and translation you can understand that nlp has a wide used or most of the nlps uses a some kind of an rnn if you want to add a captions to the pictures dog is jumping from a fence car is moving on a left lane that kind of a captions are also done by an rnn it do involves an cnn also where you have to detect the pictures but we are not going to going into that detail but just to add a caption to a pictures you require an rnn predicting a share price as i have said earlier also you cannot use a simple time series example for predicting a share price you need to do a little work on to convert your share prices into a specific shape because the share prices are very much volatile dynamic and a simple rnn prediction without any factor will not give you an exact output you require to do a lot of work in your inputs if you want to add a subtitle in a movie that is in captioning in youtube it is also done using an rnn because you are predicting the words dependent upon the your previous word and the one of the very interesting example that i would like to point is uh, that in 2016 ai has directed a movie also i suggest you to google a sun spring that is a movie written by an algorithm turns out to be hilarious and intense and you can read this article and i strongly suggest you should read this article and you can also find the wikipedia entry for this so sunspring is nothing but it is a movie that is an experimental science fiction 
created using an RNN and specific LSTM. It was featured in Skyfi London Film Festival in 2016, which is a 48 hour challenge where you are given some a kind of phrases and out of that phrases you have to form your whole scene. It is nominated among the top 10 film in the final. Benjamin is the name of a person but it actually is an LSTM that is trained on a human screen place that is conceived by Goodwin and Sharp. More details you can read it on the Wikipedia and on the web. There is a YouTube video where this movie has been directed that was written by LSTM and just get some time to see the movie i guess it's only six minute or ten minutes movie so you can understand in 2016 how much this rnns and lstm has evolved in creating a movie it has written its own screenplay dependent on some phrases